All right, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about upgrading my MacBook Pro. And the first upgrade I made was the hard drive. The hard drive that came with my system was one of those spindle hard drives and they are noisy and a bit slow for 2018. Maximum transfer speed for those are about 100 megabytes a second. That's all right for archiving, playing videos, that kind of stuff, but for booting up, it took over a minute. For launching apps, it took 20, 30 seconds. It wasn't a good experience. Now, after upgrading my hard drive to an SSD, my boot time was 37 seconds faster. Launching apps was three times faster. So it's very, 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 very important, very, very, very important to do if you're getting a Mac Pro. I'm going to talk to you about the options you can get for your Mac Pro's um, SSD because there's lots of information out there and it's a bit confusing to be honest. So the first and the most expensive option is something called an NVMe drive. So this is something like a Samsung 960 Pro drive. Now these drives, their maximum transfer speeds are like 2000 to 3000 megabytes a second. And you can even get two of them and combine them in something called a RAID, RAID 0, and that will get you iMac Pro level speeds. However, as of time of recording, while the Mac Pro can recognize an NVMe drive, you can't use them as the boot disk. So you can use them as a scratch drive, you can put your apps on there, you can put your video files on there, you can put all this stuff on there, but booting up your system, you can't use an NVMe drive. And I don't know for sure if it will work with Bootcamp Windows. As if someone knows out there, please leave a comment below so other people can benefit from this. At the stage when I was doing my upgrade, NVMe wasn't that compatible. So I passed on that because I wanted to do price and compatibility. Next up is something called a SATA free PCIe card. So your Mac Pro's motherboard supports something called SATA 2 by default. So this allows your Mac Pro to transfer around 250 megabytes a second. However, SATA free allows you to go 600 megabytes a second. And if you get two of them and do that combination thing, that's over a thousand megabytes a second, you're going there. So something called a Velocity Duo and a Velocity Solo PCIe cards, and that allows you to put on those SATA free drives. The thing is though, um, with a Velocity Solo, that definitely doesn't support Windows Bootcamp, but you can get Windows to run on a Velocity Duo. And I emailed their support just to get some sort of clarity on how to do it. And it was just way too complicated. It was just too many steps. I didn't want the headache and I just avoided it. Now, if you don't need to boot into Windows or you're happy to go through the rigmarole of all those steps that they recommend, then a SATA free card, especially the Velocity Duo, would be a good bet because you can use any SATA free SSD you can get your hands on. So it'll be cheap. Next up is something, well, one of these on the screen right now, and this is a Celsius E2 SATA PCIe card. Cool thing about this card is that it does support bootcamp after installing the software update. You get a quick start guide and a spare PCIe frame. The card itself is pretty small and well sealed. If you turn it to the side, you can get a sneak peek of the SSDs underneath the frame. The card also features two eSATA ports for external hard drives. To install, first lift the case lock, pull the door, unscrew the PCIe screw bracket. Remove a PCIe frame. Note that the furthest two slots are slower than the bottom two. But in testing, I didn't notice any difference for this SSD drive. It may be different for an NVMe. Next, simply slot in the PCIe card. Now, something I want to point out is that it does take up a PCIe slot and PCIe slots in your Mac are precious. It's the only thing allowing you to install a graphics card, a USB free card, a 10 gig network card. So just remember that these PCIe SSD cards will be taking up one of these spaces. All right, rescrew in the bracket. These brackets can be fiddly, but with enough struggle, it does work. Turn your machine on and watch the lights flicker. On boot, you'll be greeted with an error message. This is a good thing. It means the Mac recognizes the drive. If you launch disk utility, you can verify this. Disk speed tests show that it writes at around 580 megabytes a second and reads at 650 which is six to seven times faster than my spindle hard drive, but still a lot slower than drives in modern Macs today. So there's a big question mark there on value for money. 
Next, you're gonna to wanna to get the SSD drive running as your boot drive. This will make your machine a lot faster as your boot drive contains all the system files your Mac needs to operate, not just boot. I used an app called SuperDuper for this. Simply select your current boot drive in the copy section, select the new SSD drive in the to section. By default, it will erase the SSD, copy over the files and make the SSD bootable. Now, depending on how much stuff you have on there will determine how long you have to wait. For me, transferring over around 800 gigabytes took over seven hours. But once it's done, go into System Preferences, Start of Disk, and select the SSD drive as the boot drive. That's it. You can now repurpose your hard drive for something else. If you want to install Windows via Boot Camp, make sure you also install the Dual Boot Enabler. While doing so, you'll be prompted to allow the software to be installed by Mac Security Policy, so watch out for that too. Overall, this drive does exactly what it says on the tin. However, for the performance, it is a bit overpriced and it is using up one of those valuable PCIe slots. So I opted to return this one because it wasn't really that uh, beneficial. Like booting up wasn't faster than my SATA 2 SSD. It did have a much faster read and write maximum transfer speed. However, in normal day-to-day -day usage, I didn't see any difference. And this is something to think about when upgrading your system because for example, my SATA 2 card inside my Mac Pro is five times slower than the SSD in my Mac Pro. However, it launches Final Cut Pro and Photoshop a lot faster than my MacBook Pro. So it's not all about SSD maximum transfer speeds. For me, it's more about the seek speeds. And with SSDs, you're getting really, really fast seek speeds. What seek speeds is, how fast it is to get to a file. With the spindle drives, they're a bit slow, but with SSDs, you can get them instantaneously, so it's a good bet. So finally, what I decided to opt for was getting a standard SATA-free SSD drive and just plugging it in to the SATA-2 port of my motherboard. This is a disk speed test of a crucial SSD. So I'm getting 250 write and 250 read. So it's maxing out the SATA speed for SATA 2. Now this doesn't give me the maximum transfer speed of that SATA 3 drive, but it still runs really fast and I don't actually notice any difference whatsoever. Now, if you do want to do this and you want to try to plug in your SATA 3 drive in your Mac, there are these special trays that support the smaller SSD drives. I just plugged it into the SATA 2 connector underneath my CD drive and rested it onto my tray. So I've got the SSD there. Uh, got it floating underneath the DVD tray. So if I'm not shaking about my Mac Pro, it seems to live fine over there. You can always use some sticky tape and sellotape it yourself. You do not need those $50 <laughs> connectors that they sell. All right, guys, hope you found that useful. If there's anything I missed, please leave a comment below and make sure you hit that subscribe button because I'll be posting more videos on my upgrade process. For example, the memory, CPU, all that kind of stuff. Now, let's get to editing this damn video.